So after that uh, meeting, how, how did you proceed? In, in so basically, we, um, we finished recording that song, but um, we mutually decided that we should save it for um, the later releases. So we began on working with other songs which came to be um, another one called All Night Long, which still has yet to be released, and another one called Burning Slow. And with this song, YRC, it didn't really come to light after, um, until I moved back to Thailand in September. That was when I started recording YRC. Mm -hmm. It started yeah, out after... Go ahead. I, I don't know who said something. Oh, oh. it's kind of because we, you know, like a, a lot of times we were just kind of like making the songs, uh, and then we didn't really know how to release it or when. You know, we kind of have an idea, and then we felt like so. The first song we did, uh, Pat really likes the song. I really like the song, uh, but we couldn't find the right channels. Uh, it's not until like you know. I got a new neighbor moved in and then he happens to be an artist manager. Um, and then he kind of gave me, you know, uh, some advice on how we can release, uh, release the songs. And he introduced us to, to uh, unlock at level music. Um, so he showed the songs, he, you know, he said, oh, put together three songs. Um, and then uh, he also, and then he just showed the song to uh, Ben at, over at Level Music, which is uh, it's a Warner Music's new platform. Um, so Ben really liked it. Then uh, we set up a meeting with Ben, and then you know they they brought us on board. Um, so so we're uh, we're pretty much releasing uh, singles one by one with uh, with them. Okay, great, yeah. So, so since you're uh, releasing um, YRC first, do you want to talk about that song? Yeah, sure. Yeah. So I was given a beat from Tony, and um, back then when I was moving back from New York, there, there were a lot of changes and transitions in my life going on. One being that it was another step of becoming more independent and just really feeling the need to take more charges in the control of my future. So there are a lot of changes to adjust to. So I felt lost just really moving back to Thailand once again. Then there was a phase that I would just sit in my room and be completely silent. And that was when the song was born out of it, just really that frustration that I wanted to cry. I wanted to just really feel some emotions, but all I felt at that moment was just that numbness. So I decided to <laughs> channel that out into the song and just really share that story from my perspective mm -hmm. musically. Great. Great. Um, yeah, no song idea. Well, how the whole process really came about was like, so I went to Taiwan for my grandma's birthday. And then I met, cause you know, I, I stayed in Taiwan for five, six years doing music. Um, so I had some friends in, in the, um, and then some of the projects, me and some Sorry, of the songs. Sorry, can you, can you repeat the last part? You froze for a moment. Oh, sorry. So, uh, so I was in Taiwan. I, you know, I had friends in the industry, uh, since, since I over there, uh, while visiting my grandma, uh, it was my grandma's birthday. So I showed uh, 
me, the songs me and Pat has been working on, and they really liked it. So they wanted to do a collab. Uh, so Cry, this song originally was supposed to be a collab, but uh, it just never turned out. Uh, and then we just decided, oh, let's just do, uh, let's just write a complete, uh, I told Pat, let's just write a complete song, and then maybe we'll, we'll just do it ourselves. So that's mm -hmm. kind of like how the whole song came about. Okay, great. Um, okay, so who do you think your audience is? Do, are you writing, do you think this is mostly for uh, an American market? Do you think there, is, as you have said, there isn't that many R&B singers in, in Thailand? Uh, do you think you have a, a market in Thailand as well? What do you think? It's a yes and no situation because lyrically, I think that people all across the globe could relate to the fact that we've all been in that situation that we're too depressed to cry, we're too depressed, we're too just really bottled up and there's too much pent up inside of us to express it out. It's that built up frustration that people can university, um, universally relate to. However, with the, with the fact being that the market in Thailand, especially within the R&B world, moving back to Thailand, I've always felt really othering in that sense that it's just the music scene in Thailand operates differently than in the US. The fact that in the US, it's more, they would be more open to the real hardcore and be, they wouldn't frown upon you riffing here and there. But in Thailand, I would say it's a much, 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 much more watered down scene. So there are a lot of times that when I started writing Cry, that was when I, like I said, I moved, I just moved back. But then at the same time, I felt that moving back and especially having to be back in that scene that I have to dim myself down, that I have to water a lot of things down, it was really authoring. Mm -hmm. So, uh, Rin Chow, do you, I see that you have unmuted. Do you have a question or? Yeah, I was, yeah, I unmuted myself in case um, I wanted to jump in. So okay. since like you were talking about cry, so I just have a few more follow-up questions. Because, mm -hmm. for example, like, did you come up with the name to write it backward? The title of the song? With the title, I didn't come up with it. I think it was um, Tony who came up yeah. with it. <laughs> It was then um, when we were working with um, as a, you know, when it was still like really non um non provisional when it was just like the blank canvas was the beat. Then when I got the beat, I just went, okay, I'm gonna add in some reverse message to poke fun and just really be creative with it, and then on top of the reverse message, then I would be writing a song about not knowing how to start crying and that could be the most frustrating feelings um the most frustrating feeling ever and after we finished the whole song then tony came up with the idea that oh if there are reverse messages within the song then when the song talks about crying in the chorus then it would be a good idea to flip the title around. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe we can send you uh, like the MP3 version and then you can reverse it. <laughs> so yeah. Uh, yeah, the whole the whole thing is, I, I, I guess I realize it's kind of hard for average people to reverse the song. But like what, with the title, it's kind of like, you know, because the reverse reverse title. So it's like hinting people that, there's message in there that's reversed. Um, 
hopefully people will get it. I don't think people will, but you know, it kind of <laughs> matches the intro and outro. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I and mean, that's definitely creative. And it also, it's also interesting to see how like, like Petra's writing process is kind of collaborative as well. Um, and also relating to Cry, uh, you said that you wrote the song out of the uh, by yourself, like out of the loneliness of moving back. Um, mm -hmm. So I wonder um, because, like in the press release, uh, it mentions that you have like this message about um, rewinding time and uh, to re-listen really to what the person is saying. So I'm just trying to. Um, understand like did you have a person in mind when you write the song it was more of the experience that i was facing alone the fact that i didn't want to put that burden on people by venting about the struggles that i was that that i was mentally going through i just felt that i needed to grow and overcome that it wasn't easy a lot of things were in my head but i didn't feel comfortable enough to let people know in a straightforward manner but then thinking back to it i think that this song resonates with me even more the fact that there are times that people would overlook their loved ones when they're sending out cries for help or when they're trying to tell us, hey, I'm not okay, please help me. But back then I didn't have that, I didn't have enough courage to break it out to people that, oh, I seriously wasn't okay. I needed someone to talk to. I felt that I shouldn't be putting it on to other people. But at the same time, I did overcome it. But looking back to it, I felt that I didn't have to go through that alone. And so I want this song to serve as a reminder for people that you didn't have to go through that alone and to really honor what you're going through right now and that it's okay to let people know that you're not okay. And if they're able to help you or not, that's another story. We can't, like We have no control over that, right? But then it's important to at least, if you feel like you're not okay, then it's better not to betray yourself. And I think that's one of the messages to the song. And going back to that Maggie over rice analogy that I gave y'all at the very beginning, I didn't open my mind to trying new things in terms of food and I was stuck with it for at least two or three years and then I started adding fried chicken to it but then with the song cry it kind of operates the same way in that sense the fact that a lot of times how I deal with my problems how I cope with the hardships I would usually keep it to myself and I would tell myself, hey, I'm not gonna reach out to anyone unless it's it gets really unbearable. But now that the time has passed, I begin to realize that it might not be the best coping mechanism, but then in these days, people do get lost with the fact that there's always someone who's having it worse than us, in which that is valid. At the same time, it's also important to not neglect on what you're going through because at the end, you don't want that eating you up. Yeah, and then in a the broader sense, uh, you guys can hear me, right? Yeah. Yeah. So in a broader sense, because uh, a lot of times, you know, when someone's depressed, they, they've been saying like a message, but oftentimes we don't really know, well, we don't really pay attention. 
until we you know later reflect until it's too late when we reflect back and that's kind of how the song kind of works too like you don't know there's a uh, if you verse the vocals um you know there's a message in there that is, is crying and oftentimes you know we we don't realize this person is uh crying for help and i recently read uh I guess a few months ago, I read an article uh, with a Twitch streamer who committed suicide. Uh, it could have, you know, some, someone could have helped her or uh, be there for her. A lot of times we don't, people who are depressed, they're not even sure how others can help. But, maybe, you know, maybe we just sometimes need to listen to what the people around us are saying and, you know, just kind of be there for them. Uh, I think, you know, me and Pat both, have been through depression, especially, you know, when uh, going back and forth, the cultural shock and then the reverse cultural shock, uh, it's hard to adjust. Uh, I think it's a good thing that, you know, we kind of have music and then we, you know, we met each other and then we kind of have music to fall back on to kind of shift our focus somewhere else. So I feel like it's also an important uh, message to send out to people that, you know, um, maybe, if you have someone, maybe just sometimes listen a little closely uh, and realize, oh, maybe someone is really depressed or going through depression and they really need help. Uh, okay, great. So do you have anything else? Um, is it okay to share like the reverse message in cry or do you want to save it for later <laughs> Patur or I think, Tony I think that I um, think yeah we can give you guys the gist of um what the song is about and the general idea of like what the reverse message would act as but I think that it would be a little treasure hunt for the people to go away with it and come back and let us know what they found. But all I can say right now is that when the song played for it, it talks about the fact that, um, you know, you have so much pent up in you that you can't even get it out, but you need to get them out to heal and you need someone to hear it. But then you just wouldn't be able to because there's too much of it, but then you reverse the song. It's a cry for help that um, you need someone to listen to you. I think, yeah, maybe, I think what I'm thinking is we'll probably have a, like a free download on SoundCloud uh, so people can download it and reverse it. Uh, I think it's kind of more, uh, I guess a little more rewarding. Um, it's kind of, but also it's kind of like, okay, uh, you kind of have to really do something, right? Like in terms of helping people, we really have to do, uh, take uh, take some effort to do something to really uh, help, to really get the chance to help people. And in a way, it's kind of like, okay, you have to do put a little effort to find out the reverse message. Reverse message. How, however, I think good idea to let people know that there is a reverse message uh, in the song. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Since we were um, talking about like uh, mental health and how you addressed it in Cry, I wonder um, is that the usual kind of inspiration you have for songwriting, like for those kinds of hard topics? I didn't think that it would resonate with this, but as we were getting closer to the release, we became more aware that that really plays out into so much of what's going on right now. Back then I was running it from the standpoint of my personal struggles, but then since it's one of those things that we all do go through, I had no doubt that there would still be people out there that would relate to that. But then up until now, over the past few months, that was when it came to the realization that it does resonate with 
so many people on like the large scale and especially with the surrounding context, we all have a lot to um, kind of let it out and emerge from that. Yeah, a lot of the times I just tell Pat to, you know, just write how he feels like, like uh, you know, he, he's been having problems. Sorry, can you repeat board. that? Sorry, you, you dropped that. Oh, you froze again. Sorry. Oh, sorry. So when I, a lot of times I just tell Pat to write a work. Um, sorry, you know, that he, happened he, again. Do you, may, maybe we can do it without video for now and and see whether that works better. Maybe, yeah, I think it, it could be my, uh, my Wi-Fi is in the apartment, it's kind of weird. Yeah, you're, you're working fine right now, so please continue. Okay, so, okay, so when Pat was in New York, um, you know, he's, he, he just had like a lot of issues, like in terms of relationship, and then in terms of like, you know, finding, uh, finding his, finding a niche for him. Um, so that's something I experienced, uh, especially like when I first graduated and started working in New York, I just kind of felt lonely. So I can, a lot of times I can understand uh, his, you know, how, how he felt. So, you know, then I explained to him, you know, there's uh, a lot of people actually, um, I, I'm, not, I'm not sure if it's an Asian American thing uh, or just Asians in America um, have having, um, that kind of issue, but for me, like, you know, why I lived in Taiwan, uh, I didn't experience anything like this and then just felt more, felt more comfortable, but it could be different for everyone. Mm -hmm. Um, so, so, uh, a lot of times what Pat writes about, you know, even though it's about himself, I see it more like, oh, it, it's it actually resonates with uh, a lot of people, uh, you know, uh, a lot of, a lot of, uh, at least a lot of uh, Asians in America. So I, so I, I think uh, uh, he can, I always think, oh, it could be like a bigger, big, bigger meaning and bigger message that we can send out to people. Yeah. yeah, I think I totally agree. At least I personally find it very important for people to talk about like mental House and the st stigmatization of uh, talking about mental stress and mental health among Asian Americans and Asians in the U.S. in general. 